What's up YouTube? My name's Cookie, welcome back to the channel. So yeah, I'm having a, I'm having a bit of a mishmash day if I'm honest. I'm trying to get everything done. Um, basically there's a load of jobs that I need to just get done and you know sorted today. So some of it's for the mill, some of it's for Asbo with the front end swap and I'm just trying to muddle my way through and get as much done as I possibly can do. Um, so we're going to be jumping about a little bit. I'm not including any of the middle stuff in this video. This is all about Asbo. Right. So I've had the bearings out of here. I've got the forks in and I've mocked up what I want to do with the yolk in CAD. Hopefully you've seen that already. Um, that bit. So now I'm basically just building the front end up piece by piece. So these discs look horrible. They really do. They're all chipped and marred and you know, all the paint is well been painted in the middle. Um, however, they might do just to see if it all works. Doesn't feel like there's a lip on the disc. These hundreds of bloody cable ties that don't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, they're not keeping it all together. Um, so anyway, yeah, I need to get the bearings in this. We're going to have a look at the discs. Um, if they're in service limit, I'm just going to use them for now. They're obviously going to get changed when it gets built, but you know, I mean, there's no chunks missing or any of that sort of stuff. They just look ropey. And to be fair, the whole bike looks ropey at the minute because it's just a test bit. Well, oh, where's my phone for service limit? Right, so replace any brake disc if worn beyond the service limit or exceeds the disc run out limit. Um, so, front disc. Thickness standard is four mil. Service limit is three point five. All right, calipers. All right, zero that. Uh, can you see? I don't know. <laughs> right, three point nine. Trying to get a bit where it's just on the disc rather than a hole. Come on. Three point nine. Right, I'm calling them good. At least within service limit anyway. Right. That's um the surface smooth and stuff on here. I mean, these are steel discs. Um, you probably know, leave your bike out in the rain and don't use it. Your discs will rust. That will clean off as soon as you clamp down some brake pads on it. So I think we're going to be all right as far as the discs go. Um, I just need to get the bearings in and the centre tube, obviously. Um, so we're going to give this a bit of a clean up, get them boshed in. And then I can have a look at the calipers. Right. Let's do that. Quick clean. I'm just using um, car cleaner. That's all I've got. I haven't got any brake cleaner or anything. But it does the job anyway. It's more that rather than just you know cleaning it arbitrarily, it's more a case of getting the surface where the bearing's gonna sit to get that in there nice. Um I've got this in oh we should be all right, I think. Right, so bearings. All balls racing. 
More stickers. You get stickers with everything you buy off them. Brilliant. Uh, right. Um, there are going to be some changes to this front wheel. Because <laughs> why wouldn't I? Lovely. Um, there's this little doohickey thing that sits in there, like that. Um, I think it's part and parcel of the uh, speedo drive, I want to say. I'm not sure, I haven't got a Daytona. So I don't really know. But we ain't going to be using that. Um, I'm going to be making up another spacer. So I quite like the idea of doing something that comes sort of around the hub down to meet the axle on both sides so it just finishes it off and looks a bit nicer. But I don't know, we'll get it all together and we'll have a look see. So, what size are you? Um, um, I've got one of these uh, bearing driver kits. Um, you can just like get that handle, shove one of these on it and just bosh it in. Um, I've got a hydraulic press now, so we're just going to get Big Ben on the case. He'll do it in no time. I do like Big Ben. He makes some jobs an awful lot easier, as to be said. <laughs> Didn't make any funny noises either today, which was nice. Oh, hello, more messages. Um, so at the minute, all I'm doing is going for fitment. I have got the seal in this side. Look how chipped and nasty all this is. I am going to be getting some more, more brake discs, but for now these will do. This side, I haven't put it in. There's ordinarily, I think they run a speedo drive off these. We ain't doing that, because this isn't a trumpet, it's a bandit. <laughs> so we are going to be making something up for that, doing something a little bit different. Um, but, I just want to see if the thing fits first. <coughs> so, let's get this in there. That can come out of the way. I'm trying to think what side, which way around it goes. Is there a direction? Yes, there is. That way. Right. Um, that goes on that side, I would imagine. I'm joking. <laughs> Yo! It's the, the wrong bloody bearings. Oh, you're having to do the rough. Tip! <laughs> right then. Tip. Oh. I know they changed the axle. Uh, I can't remember what year it was now. And I made a point of saying for this axle, 20. 20 mil. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, they're going to have to come out again then, aren't they? <laughs> what does it say on there? Oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to have to look up the number and see what it is. They sent me the wrong ones. 
Right, either that or I've ordered the wrong ones, but I don't think I did. Because I was very specific when I spoke to Mrs. Woman. This is what it's for, this is what I'm doing. Oh yeah, we've got them, we'll get them sent out to you straight away. Thank you very much. Oh, we don't need you anymore then. <laughs> oh no. Brand new set of bearings I've got to knock them off. Awesome. I believe that. Right then. Let's get on the phone to All Balls Racing, shall we? Cow uppers. Well, they look in pretty good nick. They do, to be fair. But they still need to be stripped and sorted. I've got a new seal kit for them. I just want to see what sort of state the pistons and that are in. They don't look bad. Um, not by a long shot, but I still need to have them apart. Right then. I'm getting something done today. I don't care what it is. I'm getting something done. You know, eight mil? Yes. Sweet. Let's, uh, let's see if those pistons actually move. Oh, I need a band. Yes. <laughs> Come out easy as hell. Bet the others, man. Ah, uh, hum, hum, hum. Right, let's split them. I can always use the air trick. easy and the pistons actually don't look that bad at all. Um, we're going to shove them through the ultrasonic and give them a clean up to see what they come up like. I don't think there's any reason not to use them. Um, I've got a brake service kit. I'm not sure if it comes with this pin. I'll never see the point in just cleaning them up so you just get another one, don't you? I'm not sure if the kit actually can with it, I don't know if it did. But, we should at least be able to get things going. They're good for getting your hands clean when you got more mucky. Well, it's basically just detergent in warm water, isn't it? <laughs> Had a scrubbing brush, you well away. Right, um, I need to sort out what's going on with bearings. I am cheesed off that I've got the wrong ones. Um, I'm sure I didn't order the wrong, because I, I got in touch with them saying um, what I was doing and that they had to be the um, the 20 mil axle, axle version. So I, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I will give them a shout though and I will find out and let you know. Um, so anyway, it's limited what I can do in here now really. Um, so 
I'm gonna get all that lot sorted, and then I'll be back tomorrow. I'm back. I got some bearings. I found um, it's a local firm. All they do is bearings, which is really, really gonna be handy. Really handy. All I did was take the measurements. So, size of the hole in the middle, the outside diameter of the bearings that I need, and obviously the thickness of them. And he had a couple. He's got all sorts down there as well. I'll be going there again. Right, um, how are we doing in here? Oh, it's lucky, paint's coming off as well. <laughs> right, I need to try and get some of these other. Um, let's try and get some of these other pistons out. Um, the only way I can really think to do it is with compressed air. So, uh, Not a very good set. Right. There we go. Right, that's another one. See, look. Can you see this? That looks horrible, doesn't it? Um, in the ultrasonic, it's just degreaser. Uh, it's this stuff. Where is it? Um, there you go. Um, McLaud's concentrated degreaser and parts washer. Um, so that's all I ever really shove in it. And it does a good job of cleaning stuff up. Um, I mean, it still needs a bit of a going over and everything else, obviously, it's, it's only had like one cycle and stuff. But if you look at it, it's taken all the paint off. Um, these were coated in that, um, the caliper paint that's like a matte finish. Um, you know, not, not the glossy one and stuff. And it always seems to just start coming off again. It's not very, not very durable, I don't think. <laughs> Right, let's get the others done. Right, I've got all my pistons out. It's a dodder with compressed air. Um, the only thing I will say, normally I sink it down in the vise because you've got like this step in it here. So I normally sink it down in the vise. So the vise is across that bit in front of the pistons. That way, when you do put the air into it, they're not just going to fly out like that one did. <laughs> got that bit wrong, wasn't paying attention. Um, they do come out with a bit of a pop but they do come out, which is a good thing. Um, and you don't need to like hook it back up to the master cylinder or anything else. You know, you just, bit of compressed air, put your finger over a couple of holes and they will pop out. Um, all I'm doing here is shoving everything back through the ultrasonic. I want to get these cleaned up. There's no rust on them, but I want to get them clean. I also want to give these like a proper going over. They look manky as hell and there's still goo and crap and stuff in there. So they're all getting cleaned out. I'm also having the seals out just so it can get into basically everything. Did I do you? No. Um, and that way we're starting from scratch basically. Um, I am cheesed off that one of them didn't have a spring, but I'll just get another spring for the brake pads. That'll be all right. There's no reason why I can't get the rest of this stuff done. 
so I'm getting onto the forks with those discs and see if everything lines up as it should be. So whilst this is going through the ultrasonic, I'm gonna nip out and get some washers just to space it out. And you know, I'm gonna to need to turn like a proper wheel spacer and stuff anyway, certainly for the right hand side. Um, if I can just space it out and get it there or thereabouts, then we can offer up the calipers and all that stuff and just make sure everything is as it should be. Will you come out? <laughs> Wedged in there. There we go. <laughs> right, so he's all gone. Don't read that. Right then. So they're all good. They're all clean. Um, what do you mean? Um, I've given them a scrub in the ultrasonic and stuff as well just to get a lot of the schmutz and schmoo and stuff off. I probably will paint them, I don't know. We shall see. I'm going to need to nip out them and get some more screws because the old bandit ones is too small. I think they're M8, these are M10. So there's a supply just down the way. Um, and I will nip out and get some. So that'll be alright. Um, all the pistons and stuff have come up lovely, that's all fine. Um, I've got my service kit and stuff so I can chuck it all back together. Whilst I'm out I think I'm, I am going to get some paint, just, you know, why not? Because <laughs> these look horrible, I don't really want to stick them back on the bike looking like that. I know it's only a test bed and stuff, but, you know, why wouldn't you try and make it look at least a little bit nicer, right? Eh? Um, so they can go on like that. I've got all my pins and everything else. So we should be in. Um, I also need to pick up some washers, just so I can space out the front axle. I need to get the bearings and stuff pushed in. We should be able to stick all this back together again, at least have a look and see if we're in the ballpark and if it's gonna work. Right, phone, keys, I'll be back. We're back. Um, picked up some washers. Um, I don't know how many is in there. But they've got a 20 mil hole in, so the, the actual should go through. I'm going to need them to space it out and try and get it central so I know what I'm doing with wheel spacers. Um, got some carpet mountain bolts. Just stainless steel, sort of 30 mil M10 hex head screws. And I've got some paint. That's just for the calipers because these really do look horrible and I'm not shoving them on like that. <laughs> well I am, I'm doing that today. But they are going to get a coat of paint before I leave, just to make them look a bit more presentable. Um, so anyway, uh, plan is, I'm go I've got the bearings, so I'm going to hoof them into the wheel. You don't need to see that, you've already seen it once. Then once we've got the basic wheel together, I can shovel the front end in and we can line all this up and see if it's going to work. It should do, but you never really know until you bolt it down. Right, let's get the bearings done. Right, the bearings is in. Right, let's shove this on. Which way around do you go? Um, that way. Washers. What to do with a pin? Oh, here we go. <laughs> right, do you think that's good? Yes, he does. These bearings are very slightly wider, like very slightly wider. And um, I'm not particularly bothered because we're going to be making up our own spaces and everything else that goes with it anyway. And I'm not running a speedo drive. Speedo on this is going to be a GPS one. Um, the tube in the middle did have to get changed. Um, basically cut to the same length, but because this inner race is a smaller diameter, obviously the tube needed to be a smaller diameter as well. So all I'm going to do here is start 
trying to pack it out and space it out where it's somewhere close. Um, if I can get the wheel in, stick the calipers together and shove them on, I can centralise it as best I can. Um, but then we also need to sort of tram it front and back as well. So I reckon let's start off with, I don't know, then maybe. <laughs> we'll just keep packing until we get it about right. Right then. So I've just had one washer out of that side, stuck it on this side just to shift the wheel over and try and get the facing right again. Ow. And um, that side, yes. Oh, that's better. Still will do with going like a tad more, I think. How wide is this? Yeah, it's like half that thickness. All right, we could work with that though. So when I make this um, spacer up, I need to add half a washer's thickness between there and the race. That will put it smack in the middle. And hopefully this one is going to be the same sort of thing. He needs to go over more. What's going on there? What is going on there? You want another one. One side don't look too bad. It is over to one side, but we need to have one of those washers out and stick it on here. Just to get the calipers to sit right. this out. Basically I'm going to need to have a spacer between the caliper and the actual caliper bracket itself because I want this slot to be either side of the disc. Um, these discs do have a little bit of a kick out to them and if it didn't have as much we wouldn't have a problem. Ah. Right, okay. Alright, well, for now, a washer will do. But we're going to need to come up with something for that. So. Oh, no. Oh, don't say you're a different pitch. And you look like it. Oh. Really? <laughs> you look like a 1.5, but are you? Oh. Oh, 
seems to sit all the way down. Maybe you're just a very grubby M10 thread. <laughs> He's going in. <coughs> Do that fit? No. Um, I've got my taps out because I just wasn't convinced it was a 1.25 and I can't get my uh, thread pitch gauge into the hole and be able to see quite how it's engaging so I decided to deal with taps. M10 by 1.25 goes in more than happily but I bought M10 by um, 1.5 not 1.25 so I need to get some more that'll be fine we'll just clean the threads out whilst we're here well that's gone in quite happily so they are a 1.25 pitch awesome Definitely, definitely, definitely. Right, I'm back. <laughs> Again. Um, just hit up the road and swap out those uh, stainless bolts. Some of the right pitch. These ones in stainless, these are steel, and they're five mil longer. But they fit. Right. Uh, where's the washers? Um, 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 um. Okay. I have days like this, I do, and they're really annoying. No. Oh, playing that game again. Um, actually, what's the. I did have the other ones. Yeah, okay. Right, that'll do. I have days like this, where it's like you've got all these plans and everything else, and it just all goes peak top. It's like, you know, you bought the wrong thing, you've got to go back and change it, you're missing something, you've just got to nip out and get another one, and all that sort of stuff. Really annoying. Always hours, hours, literally cocking about trying to get stuff that I should have had in the first place. Um, I was thinking about this on in the in the van on the way to get them. What I'm probably gonna do, because there's loads of meat on these count on this um, bottom plastic. What I might do is open the back up in the mill once I get it up and kick in and just do like a little top hat washer that sits in the back rather than faffing about with washers like this just because I don't want to faffing about with washers. <laughs> I don't know. We will see what's what. But anyway, that's um, how you sit. Look close, isn't it? Interference, but I do want some more. Right. Right, I'm not sure I'm gonna be using these on the build. But I do have a set of clip ons that's gonna fit, and they'll certainly do for now. Um okay. <coughs> oh, right, didn't I? Left and the right. Oh, where's the screw? Don't tell me I've got to go out again. No. <laughs> there we go. Right, let's shut these on.
what it's going to be like for these sectors. It does sound like it's an angry man outside the front of the end, doesn't it? Oh well. Right. Now these are going to be lower because we're going to be running drop yokes. Mmm, see? Actually, where is my rule? And a sharpie. Uh, oh. Serves. What was it? Um, we we're 50 mil short, I think. Is it 50 mil? Yeah, 50 mil short in the forebook. So we're going to be dropping the yokes down to about there. The thickness of the top yoke is 25 mil. Which puts it there. So that's where they're going to be going. Now that is quite low, isn't it? I need to see what it's going to be like. But what I'm probably going to end up doing is you can get some of these where the, the riser comes up. So you get like a 25mm uplift. So that will bring us back up to this point as far as where the, the bars go. But I need to see what it's going to be like. I don't know what I did with my own head. Where's my own head? Alright, this could all end in tears quickly. Is the bars are sticking out too far, I think. They probably want to come in. But <clears throat> you can see what I mean. The front is very, very low. If it was up here, it would be easier. Okay. Maybe I do go for a one inch set. And the bars are very flat at the minute as well. If I bring them in, essentially I'm shortening that distance, so that's going to bring me up a bit as well. Let's do that. I'm going to stop wobbling. I'm definitely up a bit more now. This should bring in the bars back. That's kind of where I want to be. Foot pegs do need to go back a bit. 
but I think we could get away with that. I'm not saying I'd want to do an awful long journey on it, but I would like to chuck it around a bit. That's quite cool actually. Yeah, that could work. Um, yeah, that could work a treat actually. I wonder if I could just make them on the bottom of the... Uh, See, now I'm thinking maybe extend the yolks out so I can drill it and put the bar straight into the yolk. I'll need to play about with that design a bit more, I think. Um, but that is doable. That is doable. So essentially, the top of the forks is going to be dropping down to... Um, basically where that, that first mark is, that's how, how much the top yolks are going to come down. So if I make the top yolk a bit deeper, so it can down, you know, not so it, it slopes down, so it starts there, but it's a deeper, um, deeper top yolk, then I can stick the clip on straight through the top yolk. And that way there's no mucking about with setting the angles of your, your clip-ons or anything else. It's all just built into the top yoke. So that might be a change that's coming. Right, is it the best mask up job ever? No, no it ain't. <laughs> Basically all I'm doing is, I'm masking off the bits where the fluid's going. Um, no, can you see this? Yeah? So where the two halves join, and you've obviously got the seals, um, that's been masked off, just so the rubber seal's got metal to seal against. And obviously where the pistons run, I don't want to get any paint in there. Um, so that's masked off, and that's it. On the other halves, I've just wound a banjo boat in, uh, sorry, a bleed nipple in, where that normally goes. I've got replacements in the, in the service kit anyway. And I've just masked off where the banjo goes. All the rest of it is getting it. So that's it, that's what I'm doing. Um, with this stuff, no primers needed. Directions are give it one mist coat and then give it a full coat and that's it, jobs are good. So not gonna be any talking about, you know, 15 minute wait time and then do another one and then 15 minutes and then another one. I'll just get it done and I'll get out of it. That'll be fine. All right, let's um, hang them up, put them on a squirt. This is just fill a rod from my tig in. It will do, I'll just poke it through out, that'll be fine. Like that. Here we go. Right then. Right, at this point, I think I'm supposed to cover everything up with blankets and that. Well, I've got a lot of stuff and I ain't got any blankets and it's all covered in dust and stuff anyway, so that ain't happening. I'm going to wish you good night. Thank you for watching. Because we won't be able to talk in a minute because the whole place is going to be full. Yeah, it's not that bad. I'll open the door, it'll be fine. to this level as well. Um, dropping the clip-ons down the forks like this uh, is going to do a number of things. So because your clip-ons are lower, obviously your wrists are lower, which means you're leaning forwards more, which means more weight is being transferred to the front, the front's heavier, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm used to sports bikes. I don't really like the sit up and bed type thing that this started out as. Um, I just find that if you're sort of lower down to the bike, you feel more part of it and you can definitely feel more what's going on. But the further up I sit, you know, your sort of body, I mean your body's like the best shock absorber going, it kind of just smooths everything out. But to me it just feels vague. Um, so by dropping these down, 
Hopefully we're gonna get some of that back a bit as well. Um, putting more weight on the front isn't so much a problem anymore, not with these forks, because they're fully adjustable. So, you know, I can counter for all that sort of malarkey. Um, so that's all gonna be fine as well. Um, if you move the bars further out so they're flatter, that makes it even more. <laughs> we have got loads of room here between the, um, the bars and the, the, the rest of the bike. If I wanted to, I could bring them in a little bit more. Um, but we're gonna go with this and see how it feels. And then if you need to change it, we'll just change it. So at the minute, I'm, I'm sort of splitting my time. So half my time is on the bandit, and half the time is trying to get the mill finished off. It is really, really close. I've got the steel now, I picked that up whilst I was out today. Um, so I can make the mount for the motor on the side, stick that on there, and then, not this Sunday coming, but the Sunday after, Jamie's coming down and he's gonna wire it up for me and then I can have a play. And if it's all working, I can start making stuff. Um, I've had an update about DROs, they are on their way, I should be getting them shortly. So stick that on there, and hopefully everything works as well as it should do, and we're in. That's it, that's finished, that's done. Um, I haven't heard a peep out of Steve O recently at all. We pulled all his bike apart, bits of it is all over the shop, and he's not talking to me anymore. <laughs> I mean, this is the bit where, you know, it's paying for powder coat and new tyres and get the seat covered and the paintwork and the wiring has got to be bought and all that sort of stuff. This is the bit that's going to cost him a checker or two. So, um, I probably haven't been able to speak to him just because he's working lots to a full deal, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully it's not going to be that long to get this done and then we can get back on Gypsy and basically just start the build. Um, you know, if I can get both bikes together at the same sort of time, ideal, that's fine. But I really, I want this done way earlier so I can go out hooning on it and get it tweaked and set up and everything else. So it's how I want it to be. So when this bike's finished, we can go out and have a proper play. That's the plan anyway. That's what I'm leaving today. Thank you ever so much for watching. And we will see you on the next one. Later.